Welcome. In this video, we're going to go over set up the basics of how to play and do a solo playthrough of Red Rising. So I've already got the board down on the table. So this is a game based on a book series that I have not read. So I am not going to be familiar with the characters, but Stonemaier Games usually has a good rep. So I picked this up. At his heart, this is a victory point game with some set collection. The rule book is quite short and very straightforward. Not much to do on our turn. So we're going to start with a two player setup. I'll show what's different about the solo, go into a quick victory point summary, and then jump into a gameplay. So with the board out, we're going to take our helium tokens and bring them out on the board. Then out of our character cards, we're going to look through those. Uh, if you're playing just a regular two player, they all get shuffled together. If you're playing solo, we're going to take these out, the psychologist, the loan shark, the rogue, EO, and the auctioneer will not be used in solo play. So these will all get shuffled and placed on their spot on the board. Then in each location, we're going to put two of the characters. So these cards are going to show their victory points at the end of the game some possible additional victory points at the end of the game, end of the game ability and a deploy ability. And on the side, it lets us know that he likes to be put with blue cards. So we'll put two of each of those in play. So we've got Octavia. Then on Mars, we're gonna have Romulus. And the Garden Trained Rose. Over on Luna, we've got Eevee. And Dr. Verami. And then at the Institute, we're going to have a Diplomat and Aja. Then each player is going to get five cards one, two, three, four, and five. We'll look at our hand here in just a bit. Uh, playing regular two player, the other person gets five in solo. The AI is just going to get two cards face down. Then we're going to take the house tiles, randomize those, give each player one. So we are going to be Mars. So whenever we gain the Sovereign token, even if you already have it, gain a Helium, which are these tokens there. And we're going to give one to the solo player, pretty much just to give them a color. Then we're going to take a ship of each color and put it on the fleet track at zero. Hand out our 10 influence tokens for each. And in a two player and solo game, we're going to take three of a different color and just put those in the influence track. We've got a first player token. And since Apollo wasn't chosen, we're going to choose to let Ceres go first. Then we have a sovereign token. We'll just put around here. One of us will be able to get that by going to Luna. And we have our rising die, which we'll just have off to the side. So that's the basics for a two player game. For a solo game, we're going to take the AI cards, and basically what they're going to do is go over where they're going to deploy. They're taking a the card off the top to put down, where they're going to take a card from, and if there's a bonus ability, we're going to give this a shuffle, then remove four of them. Basically, that's so each time we go through this stack, it's not going to be entirely the same, so we'll take four cards and put to the side. We're going to take the priority cards, give them a shuffle. They're going to go one in each location. So Jupiter is going to be priority C for us. Mars is a D. Luna, priority A. And the Institute must be a B. And the rules state that if A is here, we're going to put, make this bonus ability the same as D. So that's going to be the Mars. So we'll put that down and that's going to come into play when the AI would take a card from there. And we're going to take our odd and evens. We're going to look at the cards out here. So we've got two, three, four evens and four odds. 
And since it is even, with that, we're gonna choose even. So if we had more odds out here, we would flip that and that's gonna determine scoring at the end of the game for the AI. Basically, it's not gonna score the same as we are. So if they're set up complete, we do have these great turn order cards. So turn overview. On our turn, we have two options we can do. We can lead or scout. On our turn, if we lead, we're gonna deploy a card from our hand face up on any of these locations, uh, triggering its deployability, which is the symbol here. Then we get to do one of the following. We can gain the top card from another location. So if we played a card down here on Jupiter, we couldn't pick the same card back. We have to pick a card from those three. And then we gain that location's bonus. So the bonus of Jupiter is we go further up on the fleet track. At Mars, we gain a Helium token. At Luna, get the Sovereign token. And at the Institute, we place Influence up here. The other option is gain the top card of the deck, uh, then roll the Rising die to see what happens. So it's got all those same symbols. This is we banish a card from the top of the stack. And that one is we reveal the top card of this and place it down not deploy. Then our other option is to scout, reveal the top card of the deck and place it at any location, not deploying it and gain that location's bonus. Typically we're only gonna do this when we are totally happy with our hand. So end of game scoring for us, we've got end of the game abilities. Let's see, if, yeah, we've got one here. So you may gain any number of these banished cards and put them in our stack. So it's not so much going to give us points, some might, but they might let us do things. Cards, victory points, and abilities would be the victory points up here, plus the abilities at the bottom. Where we are on the track, so anywhere from 0 to 43. Then for each of our helium tokens, we get three victory points each. If we have the sovereign token, we get 10 victory points. And then at the institute, if we have the most there, we're going to get four victory points for each token we have there. Second place, we'll get two for each. And then last place, one victory point for each. And that's why there's three there, just so we have to work a little bit to get up on that track. And then for us, we have more than seven cards in our hand, minus 10 victory points per card over seven. So the difference in scoring for the AI is the cards aren't gonna matter for it. It's just gonna get a blank 70 points. And then we're going to have look at take out all the evens. If that equals 20, we'll stop there. If we don't have 20, we'll keep enough of the odd cards until we've got 20. Then for all the even cards matching what we have down here, they are get six points each, and for non matching, three each. So anywhere from 60 to 120 points there. So we're gonna to have to score a lot of points. I can see that much, so this is my first time playing it. The AI still scores points for the ship on the fleet track, Helium, Sovereign, and that also. Not penalized for the additional points, even though we probably do need that to have a chance. So from reading the rules, looks like simple game to play. Strategy is gonna be a different thing. So this is a how to play, not a strategy to play. So the game, it's going to end when three things happens. Once between the two of us, we have seven on the fleet, seven helium tokens on one of us, and seven of our tokens in the influence track up here. Or if one player has two of those three items, that will end the game. We all get the same amount of turns. So with the AI going first, we are going to have the last turn. And turn order is going to be the AI is gonna go through two of these cards, then we're gonna take our turn following this and flip back and forth until the in-game conditions are met. So before we get started, we'll take a look at our hand. Now we have an idea of what we're scoring for. So right off the bat, we can see each of these, the points are gonna give us at the end of the game. Then possibilities at the bottom. So nine points, 31, if the core value of each of your cards is an odd number, so. If we got rid of those two and brought in some others, that could potentially get us 40 points, which I think is good. 
Um, this one, 13 plus 17, if with a pink or quicksilver named character. Uh, this one is 5 plus 10 for each obsidian card. So we've got obsidian there. 20 plus 20 with Ragnar, minus 5 for each gold in our, so, and that's kind of shown here. And then this one, 20, and then 2 for each of your influence tokens on the Institute. So pretty neat. We'll put those all out. And we're ready to get going. So two cards, what the AI does. So this tells us they want to deploy to area B, which is the Institute. So they're going to just take a card off the top. So we've got Tactus going down. Then they want to pick up a card from this location. So they're just going to take this and we can see it's at least odd. So three points. Then it's going to actually get the ability from that location. So it's going to take the Sovereign token. And because of this card here, it's going to trigger getting some helium. And then we'll do this card. So it's deploying to space A at the Priestess. Picking up from C. There's an even number card, so there's six points. And then it's taking a special ability and moving up on the track. Oops, we'll move the right one. And that's its turn. All right, what we're going to do is play our assassin. Our deployability, banish the card directly under this one. If it's a gold, place one influence on the Institute. All right, we're going to go banish Tactus here, a gold card. So that's going to get us an influence on the Institute. And we'll throw him off into a banished pile. Then we get to pick up one of these three and get the ability above it. I think we're going to go for Luna. Put that in her hand. So we get to take the token and our ability for getting that whenever you gain the Sovereign token, gain a Helium. So that's our turn. Like I said, turns are going to go pretty quick. So it wants to deploy to Area D. So you got a CEO. And it's picking up from C, another even, so six points, but no special ability. Then it wants to deploy to Mars, bringing out a dancer, picking up from D. So normally we can't do that, but of course the AI can cheat and place down and pick up from the same spot. And that's another even one. And then since it picked up from Mars, it's going to get that ability. All right, we are going to play to Jupiter. Deployability, if you have the Sovereign token, which we do, advance once on the fleet track. So we'll move up there. And then I'm going to pick up the Assassin, which means we get this ability, play some influence. And then two more cards. Placing on B, and then taking B, another even, and triggering the Institute. I'm gonna move these down so I can reach them a little easier. And then it wants to place at the Institute and pick up from A, an odd which is going to take back the Sovereign token, and it's going to trigger its other ability. All right, we are going to play the Sponsor down. You may pay a Helium to place two Influence on the Institute. We will do that. Then we'll pick up the CEO, getting our Helium back. And then two cards. So it wants to deploy over to Jupiter. Taking from B. Got an odd. And then getting the ability up there. Placing to A. And then taking from here an even. But no special ability. All right, we're going to increase our hand size here. We're going to play him down, gain another obsidian from this location. 
Got one in play. Then we're going to pick up over here, placing in the Institute. Two cards. All right, deploying to C over to Jupiter. And picking up from B, another even card. And it's going to banish the top card of the stack. So we lost a chef. That's never good. And deploying to B. Got a 4D painter. And picking him right back up. And that is an odd and no special ability. We are going to play to the Institute. So choose an opponent, they banish one of their cards, and when they banish from over here, it comes from the bottom. So good, that was six points we just took from them, potentially. Then we're gonna pick up Romulus, allowing us to get some helium. Two more cards. And strategy-wise, I still don't have anything going on yet. I pick this one up because it's potentially going to get us another card in our hand. Could potentially get 30 points with that. I believe we're going to have five healing at the end of the game. I do kind of want to get that going on. That means I can't have even numbered things. So yeah, I don't have a plan yet, but that's the way I usually play. Uh, so over here, picking up a card to Jupiter. Snow Sparrow, and then taking A, another even, then the ability, still getting that, and some helium. Placing to Luna, taking from B, going and taking all the gold cards, and then placing in the Institute. All right, so we can look at the cards down in here. We just have to put them back in the same order. So I want to see you have the most influence on the Institute. Yeah, I don't know how that's going to pan out for us. So what I'm going to do is deploy here, gain one blue from this location, banish Romulus unless you deployed him directly on top of gold. Well, we're not, but we get to gain this card. So it's even, which fits with what I want to do with Zanzibar there. Um, in the game, 20 if your fleet track position is 5 to 7, 35 if we're 8 to 10. So we need to get our fleet moving up. And that was not our regular gain, so we still get to gain something. So I think we'll gain the sponsor. So I really don't want to get any more cards in this. Then we start getting negative points at the end of the game. I think is what that says. Yes, beyond seven. So now we need to start working some strategy here. Playing down to A. Picking up from Jupiter. Another even. No ability. Playing down at the Institute. Picking up from C and getting the ability from there. So another even, and flying on up. And the arrows, basically, say it had picked up in D, that just tells us we go that direction to pick cards up. And of course the other arrows means we go that direction until we can fulfill what it wants to do. All right, we're gonna play the sponsor over at Mars. You may pay helium to place two influence on the Institute. Then we're going to pick up the Pathologist, taking the Sovereign token, which gets us a Helium. Then two more cards over here, playing to C, picking up from Mars and getting the ability. So another even, because we keep putting them out there. So that's kind of working against us. I'm trying to keep odds 
which means I'm playing my evens and it's trying to pick up evens. Maybe I should have a better strategy. Playing down to B, got a surgeon. Picking up from over here and getting the ability, ships flying past us. Nope, there's no odd cards out there. This could be a problem for us. We are gonna send Ragnar. Let's see, gain the Sovereign token. Banish a non-gold from your hand and gain a banished gold. We're gonna place Ragnar over here. Banish the top card of another location. If it's gold or gray, place an influence on the Institute. So we're gonna banish this here. It's gold, so we get to go up here. So we definitely have seven up there. Then, you know what? We're gonna take off the top. And roll the die. Which is reveal another one and place it. So we've got Victra. We'll throw her. This really doesn't matter. Well, we'll give us options. All right, last two cards over here. Once a place over at Mars. Pick up from A. There is none there, so it's going to go this direction to pick him up, an odd one. And get the ability of another token. So we've got six over there, more than seven here. So once this gets to seven and one more over there, it's going to trigger the end. So placing over on Luna, picking up from A, it's taking all the odd ones from us, getting the ability here, taking a sovereign token. All right, so we've got two in-game conditions set. We've gone through this stack. So we're gonna pick up the four that were discarded earlier. Shuffle in here. And I think I'm in trouble scoring-wise. Got absolutely nothing going on. One, two, three, four. So we want odds, there are none up there. We're gonna break out the Assassin, banish the card directly underneath this. If it's a gold, place an influence on the Institute. Then we're gonna pick up Ragnar, which moves us on the track. Two cards, placing to A, taking from Mars. Then placing to Jupiter and taking over here with the special ability. It's already got that. Get an eighth token. All right, we're gonna play the CEO over here. You may regress once on the fleet track. If you do, gain two helium. Then we're gonna pick up over Jupiter to go back up, picking up Uncle Gnarl. Then we're placing on A, another even, Ugly Dan. Picking up over here. Then placing on C, Trig. Picking up on B. And then banishing Mustang. All right, we're gonna play over on the Institute, gaining two helium. Then we're gonna pick up here, which moves us on the track. All right. Placing out at the Institute and picking up at the Institute. Firewall expert. And placing at the Institute, got a developer. Picking up from A, taking Ugly Dan, 
getting the ability. We're gonna play Ragnar over here, then pick up the developer. Oh yes, banish the card underneath of him. If it's gold or gray, which it isn't, it's just banishing. And we're gonna pick up over here and put our 10th on that spot. Then two cards. So it's gonna place it Luna and then pick up here, picking up Deanna, then getting the ability, got the token and more helium. Man, soaking up that helium. It's gonna be talking funny. Placing at the Institute, picking up Ragnar and jumping her ship. We're going to play to Mars, pick up at the end, well, playing, you may gain any other card from this location if you do end your turn or not. We're picking up from the Institute, we're maxed out so we can't add anything else there. I want him because that's another 26 points if with blue. And hopefully next turn I can pick this up, get seven, we'll have two of these things to end the game with. All right, back to our AI. Placing down to C uh, and picking up, ruining our plan. And getting the ability for there. Then, okay, placing to Mars. It still works for us. And taking from A, there isn't any, so it's taking from Mars. but I believe the ability still comes from here either way to getting the same thing. All right, so we are going to scout then. Reel the top card and place it on any location and gain the bonus. And that's gonna trigger the end. We've got seven here and more than seven there. So we've met two of the three in game conditions. So now it all comes down to scoring. So because of my brain, we are going to just count the top rows. Well, we've got our in-game ability. We only have one card that's doing that. You may treat this card as if it is any one other color in addition to gray. I don't think that's gonna affect us. We want blue, we've got blue, we want pink, we have pink. Um, so it's not gonna matter. So, Nine plus 13 plus 15, another 15, five, another five and nine. Then we get our bottom bonuses. Another 26 if we're with blue. 17 if with another pink. Five for each gray and yellow on all locations, zero. 20 with the Jackal, she's not. All right, there are at least, how many cards do we have banished? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. If they're five to nine, we get an additional 10 points. And I've hit the wrong button. All right, we're at 114 plus 10 for that. If your fleet track is far enough up, it isn't. Then 31, if all these are odds. So we've got 155 there. So I think we're done with all that. Then we go up top, we get six points. Three for each of these. So one, two, three, four, well, seven, so 21. We didn't have the sovereign token. We're in first place there, so that's gonna get us another 40. We do not have more than seven. So we're gonna end with 222. Then we go counting this guy. So he's gonna start with a base 70. We're gonna do the easy stuff first, 10 for that. Then good grief, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 36. Sovereign Token is another 10. Then it's tied for second place, so it's still going to get two for each of those, so six points. Then it comes down to this. So we're trying to find all the evens, so we're going to separate each of these stacks into odds and evens. And then we're going to take 20 of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, and four. So the sixteen times six is ninety-six. And then three times four is another twelve. And that is based off the difficulty level. So we're doing the normal. We can make it a little bit easier. So if I lose this, I can change the numbers and say, hey, I won level one. Or we can go to crazy, 14 and seven. Good grief. Let me know if anyone has luck with that level. So that looks like 270. So we got whooped. Well, I guess that goes on the bottom. But that is the basics of how to play Red Rising. So my initial thoughts after one solo play, um, I'll go ahead and say I think this is going to be a better game multiplayer. I don't see me doing much more solo. I'll probably do it one more time just to see if I can do a little bit better than that. I feel like I got whooped there, but I did not spend much time developing down at the bottom. But as far as presentation and theme, I haven't read the books, but I mean, the artwork, the card quality, true, this is the collector's edition. Uh, components, top-notch, A-plus on all that. The rules, there was nothing I had questions about after reading this. So I feel like the rules did a great job for the solo and regular. Um, everything's just broken down. I mean, of course, the game is super easy. You've got two things to do on your turn, and there are possibilities you might have some questions. So in this notes section, they pretty much go over everything else that could happen. And I had zero questions about what was going on here. Unless I did something wrong in the game, you'll have to let me know, but I feel like the rules are got everything done. Gameplay and replayability. We'll say if I read the books, I feel like I would enjoy this a lot more, but the artwork is appealing. There's definitely different ways to build your tableau or your hand of cards to get more points. So depending on how cards come out, I see a lot of replayability here. Scores are going to get quite high. And as far as teaching to someone else, I mean, when you can get everything you need to know on something like that, like I said, teaching is going to be easy. The strategy involved, analysis paralysis, I can see that being a huge issue with some people. But gameplay and replayability looks good. So for those of you that have read the books, let me know what you think of this. Um, I'm interested on the characters. Hopefully I got close enough you can see some of them. Um, for the houses, came out. Like I so said, that one allows you to get helium. Does that make sense in the books? For series, playing with that, getting the game with plus one card whenever you gain the Sovereign token, even if you already have it. Uh, banish any one card from a location of your choice. At the end of the game before scoring, banish a card from your hand. So that's that faction. And you've got Apollo, take the first and last turn. So that's going to get you an extra turn every round or every game. Also, whenever you take the Sovereign Token, reveal in place, not deploy the top card of any location. So you're just bringing more things out. But you get to go first and last. So that's a good bonus. House Minerva. Let's see, roll the rising die, gain the corresponding bonus. The result is the Sovereign Token. Select any other bonus on that die. Then at Jupiter, uh, advance once on the fleet track. And then Diana, uh, place an influence on the Institute. So hopefully that gave you a good idea of how to play. So as always, if you enjoyed this playthrough, please click on the like button below and be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching.